Cinderella, the concluding part of Cinderella. We saw the first part of Cinderella, the part two of Cinderella. This is the concluding part of Cinderella. Let's go. Later that evening, Cinderella sadly returned to her room. She had so many chores to finish. There was no time to fix her dress. She looked out the window and saw the coach arriving that would be taking her stepmother and stepsisters to the ball. As Cinderella turned around, she suddenly saw the dress. Surprise! Her friends cried. Oh, it's wonderful! Cinderella explained. In no time at all, she slipped the dress on and was running downstairs to the carriage. And when Anastasia and Drizella saw Cinderella looking so beautiful, they were filled with jealousy. Why, you little thief! Drizella cried, seeing her old beads. Then Anastasia noticed her sash. That's mine! She yelled, grabbing the sash and ripping Cinderella's dress. Oh my my, what an awful thing to do. Cinderella was so upset, she ran outside to the garden and collapsed in tears. She did not notice the magical light swirling around her. When she looked up, there was an old woman sitting on the bench. I'm your fairy godmother, the lady said kindly. Dry your tears. You can go to the ball looking like that. Now, fetch me a pumpkin and hurry. Even miracles take time. Oh, look at poor Cinderella with her fairy godmother. Ooh. Minutes later, the fairy godmother waved her magic wand over the pumpkin with some magical words. The pumpkin changed into a sparkling carriage. Now, the fairy godmother began, with an elegant carriage like that, you simply have to have mine. With that, she waved her wand over Gus, Jack, and her friends, and changed them into proud white horses. By the time she was through with the farmyard animals, there was a coachman and a footman, too. Wow. Magical, of course. Magical. Then, with a final wave of her wand, Cinderella was dressed in a beautiful ball gown and lovely glass slippers. Oh, thank you, Cinderella cried, stepping into the carriage. It's like a dream come true. I know, dear, the fairy godmother replied. But remember, you only have until midnight. On the last stroke of twelve, the spell will be broken and everything will return to the way it was before. Woo! What a beautiful girl. So, so magical. Mmm! Handsome prince. Cinderella looking so gorgeous. At the palace, Cinderella entered the glittering ballroom. Glancing up, the prince saw her and fell in love at first sight. He took Cinderella's hand and led her to the dance floor. Dancing in the prince's arms, Cinderella felt as if she was floating on air. Suddenly, she heard the clock chime. Remember what her fairy godmother said at the stroke of twelve? I must go, Cinderella cried as she fled down the palace steps. Wait, called the prince. But Cinderella didn't stop not, even when she lost one of her glass slippers on the steps. She stepped into the carriage and raced home. There she is, down the stairs. Oh, as the last stroke of midnight was heard, 
the curry turned back into a pumpkin and Cinderella was wearing rags once more but she held one glass slipper in her hand. Back at the palace, the prince declared that he would only marry the girl whose foot and the glass yeah, feed the glass slipper he had found. <laughs> Mystery. Mystery glass slipper. The next day, the Grand Duke began his search. Every maiden in the land would have to try on the glass slipper until the princess's true love was found. Meanwhile, Cinderella's stepmother had become suspicious when she heard her granddaughter humming the music from the ball. She was determined that Cinderella not to try on the glass slipper. When Cinderella went upstairs to her room, her stepmother followed her and locked the door. <laughs> Vicious woman. At last, the Grand Duke arrived at Cinderella's house. Anastasia and Drizilla tried to squeeze their foot into the delicate slipper. <laughs> but it was no use. Jack and Gus wanted to help their friend. They stole the attic key from the stepmother's pocket and pushed it all the way up to Cinderella's room. Wow. We are really coming to the concluding parts of Cinderella. Just as the Grand Duke was about to leave, Cinderella appeared. Please wait, she called. May I try on the slipper? The Grand Duke led Cinderella to a chair and called the footman over. As the footman stepped forward, the wicked stepmother tripped him. The glass slipper flew through the air, fell and shattered into a thousand tiny pieces. Cinderella smiled and pulled the other glass slipper from her pocket. Perhaps this would help, she offered. <laughs> Smart girl. Smart girl. Wow, what a beautiful wedding gown. Woo! Woo! Her stepsisters shrieked at the delighted duke, saw the slipper was a perfect fit. Soon afterwards, Cinderella and the prince were married at last. At last, Cinderella's dreams had finally come true. <laughs> and this is the concluding parts of Cinderella. Please, please subscribe. So what are the moral lessons we learned in Cinderella? I don't know about you, but I learned that we should not be wicked. We should love others, whether they are rich or poor. And good things come to good people. Please subscribe.